All right, I thought I'd weigh in on the healthcare debate here and the plan that's coming through and you know, what it means. There's a lot of people that you know are saying it's just like auto insurance, right? You have to have auto insurance, right? It's like homeowners insurance. You have to have homeowners insurance. Actually, no, you don't. Um, if you don't want to own a car, then you don't need auto insurance. If you don't want to own a home, you don't need you know homeowners insurance. So uh, this healthcare tax that uh, is going to come through, you're going to have to pay if you'd like to, one, live in America, and two, breathe. Okay? You're going to pay. Now, if we'd started this back at the dawn of time, I could understand how this would be an equitable you know, and fair system. But let's look at this realistically. The older generation wasn't required to have health care insurance when they were young. Okay, so they didn't pay in. They didn't pay into the to the scheme. So there's not enough money now to take care of them. So in order to facilitate that, we're going to take the money from the younger generation. You're going to be required to have health insurance. You're going to have to pay, even though you probably don't go to the doctor. You're going to pay for something that you don't use because later you're going to use it. Okay, now this is the same exact scenario as Madoff's Ponzi scheme. Exactly the same. Investment was going in. People were taking out returns, and the system was actually working, or appeared to be working, for 30-some years. Once the government got involved and said, no, wait, that doesn't work. So that's basically what we're going to have with health care. And Obama can say it's not a tax, and I really don't want to you know, you know, single out Obama here, but I think that he's a very intelligent man who's listening to a lot of people who have no idea what they're doing. Um, and I think that's true of both sides. Don't get me wrong. I think that, you know, the Republican, obviously the Bush saga there, he had no idea what he was doing either. I mean, at least we could tell because he couldn't articulate what he was saying, so we kind of had an idea that maybe he didn't have any clue what he was doing. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. The point is that if this goes through the way that it's planned, we're doing the same exact thing we're doing with everything else. We're, we're taking, you know, liabilities that the generation that's in power right now is amassing, and we're shifting that burden to the younger generation. Now, I, I do want to say that a Ponzi scheme doesn't work because at the bottom of the pyramid, it works all the way down, right, until you get to a certain level where there's not enough people below that level in order to support the, the returns that you thought that you were going to get. Now, I would like someone to clarify what the difference is between a Ponzi scheme and the current U.S. capitalistic system in the sense that as we get to the bottom of the pyramid, you know what, it does keep going, and it keeps going because you have children, okay? So the bottom of the pyramid is always growing. Now, of course, it gets more difficult for each successive generation to accumulate wealth in the sense that my grandfather took five years to pay off his home. Five years to purchase a home and pay it off working as a general laborer. Okay? So, can you do that today? No. I mean, if you really think about it, how many people had to go to work? Let's go back to the 1800s. You had a family. How many people have to go to work of those in the 1800s? Go to work for someone else. How many people? The answer is zero. Okay? You had to work for your family. You had to raise food, you had to build a fence, you had to build a home, you had to, those kinds of things. No one had to go to work, zero. Let's progress forward. How many people had to go to work for someone else as we got into the, let's say, the 50s? One. One person had to go to work to support a family. Of, you could have 12 children if you wanted. With one person going to work, the mother stays home and takes care of the children. Progress another generation. Two. Mother and father have to go to work. Progress another generation. Now how many people have to go to work? There's only two, right? Two? Oh, no, wait. You can move back in with your parents, go to work. Your parents can go to work. Now you've got three, four, five, six. How many have to go to work? I mean, if you look at it, you know, advanced cultures, how the system is played out, you know, look at uh, third world nations. How many of those individuals need to go to work in order to support the family? The entire family. Every person goes to work. So, something to contemplate, and, you know, let me know what you think.